Hello friends, welcome back. In our previous video, we have formally defined an algorithm and have seen various criteria that all algorithms should satisfy. In this particular video, we are going to see the process for performing design analysis of an algorithm. So let us start. The first thing that you should do is to understand the problem properly. Given a problem, you should first read the problem statement and then understand what does it demand. What is the output that you, that you need to calculate? You also need to identify what are the set of inputs your problem should work for. Understanding the problem is very much important because if you do not understand your problem well, you will be solving some other problem and then later on you will have to perform a lot of rework. Therefore, invest much of your time in reading the problem statement. Read it again and again until you understand it well. Once you are clear on what, what is your problem all about and what you are supposed to identify, what, what should be your output finally, then you can start thinking of how to solve it. Also, when you are speci specifying the input that the problem should work on, decide on Take care of all the corner cases also. Right? There may be some special cases for which your problem should work. Take care of all those cases. Specify all the input trains. Note down all the input, what should be the output. And then, if possible, also take a smaller instance of the problem, a simple example, a simple a small example, and then try to solve it yourself by using pen and paper so that you get an idea how to go about solving it because if you do not solve problem if you do not know how to solve it yourselves using pen and paper it will be very difficult for you to obviously implement it or, or program it in a computer therefore this is a very important step and invest much of your time most of your time in understanding the problem i've seen many students who actually skip this step and then directly try to solve the problem but remember if we solve an incorrect problem you'll have to do a lot of rework later on to fix it therefore invest much time in this particular step understanding the problem now once you're clear on what is the problem all about once you have got the clarity you have to decide on various aspects before actually performing the design of an algorithm now let's see what are these aspects the first one is computational means this is step number two the first one is computational means what kind of computer system your algorithm is designed for where your algorithm will be implemented finally is it a sequential computer that is based on one human architecture that is fits decode execute cycle or are you going to implement this in a parallel computer this may be given as a problem statement as well or you may know from the from your clients or who is or from reading the problem statement clearly but generally computational means or the computational device is not that important whenever you are designing an algorithm in general we do not think of underlying computer system for which this algorithm is designed for therefore do not worry about this step this particular aspect much whenever you are designing an algorithm just focus on solving it correctly focus on getting the answer correctly optimizing it rather than thinking of where it is implemented so this is computational means nothing much to worry about this the next one is exact versus approximate solving does your problem demand you to find out the answer which is an exact answer or can you suffice with an approximate solution like for example if you are asked to find out the factorial of a number you always know that factorial of a number would be an exact answer like for example if I ask you to find out the factorial of 3 the answer is 6 an exact answer whereas there are problems wherein you, you it's very difficult to find exact answer it will take a lot of time it will, it will not be you should not you will not be able to solve or find the exact answer in finite amount of time in those cases you have to go for approximate solutions for example uh, suppose you are asked to find out the uh, square root of a number 
Now finding the square root, you can't find the exact square root. Like if I ask you to find the square root of 2, it's difficult to find out the exact answer. So we'll have to do with the approximate solution. So understand whether your problem demands exact solution or approximate solution. This will also help you in deciding how to go about solving a problem. The next one is the very important one, data structures. Now once you are clear with the problem, once you are clear with computational means whether you need an exact and approximate solution, now you decide how are you going to store your data. Are you going to use an array? Do you need a simple integer variable? Or are you going to use a stack or a queue? You need to decide. Because deciding an appropriate data structure will help you in actually uh, improving the time complexity. Choosing the right data structures for your problem may sometimes be very efficient because choosing the right data structures will help you to improve your insertion, deletion, operation, search, all these operations. Therefore, choosing the right data structure is very important and you should also have the basic fundamentals of all the data structures so that you can choose the app data structures for your particular problem. The next one is algorithm design techniques. Now design techniques are the general technique for solving a given problem. Like I've, I've told you in, the, in my previous videos, there are various design techniques. Divide and conquer, greedy, dynamic programming, backtracking, and so on. Now, your problem may fall under one of the design techniques. The solution for your problem may fall under one of the design techniques. Therefore, knowing the design techniques is very important because you will get a big picture. Like my problem is like similar to this kind of problem which is solved using this design technique in that particular problem. So you'll, you'll be able to relate all these things. If, so for that, you need to understand various design principles. In, in module two, we'll be discussing all, we'll be discussing about design principles. We'll be talking in details about all those design principles. Therefore, understanding where your problem falls is also a very important thing. After you're done with all these things, now we'll go for the design of an algorithm. The next step, step number three, is to design an algorithm. In this particular step, you're actually going to formulate a solution for your problem. Now, formulating a solution is not an easy task. You can actually take an idea from the already existing design techniques on how to go about solving your problem. Now, no one can teach you the design technique or how to design an algorithm. It comes with experience. So solve as many problems as you can and learn a lot about design techniques and then you'll be able to get an idea how to solve your problem. But before solving your problem, for, before formulating the solution, you should first yourselves should be clear what is the problem all about and all these steps should be clear to you. Now in this particular step, you actually design an algorithm. In this particular lecture, in this particular course that I'm offering, uh, I'm actually, uh, I'll be covering in module two a lot of design techniques. We are going to see how people have solved many different problems using different design techniques. With that, an idea, that with that you'll, you'll get an idea how to go about solving problems. And it'll come with time. You have to practice and with experience, you'll have an idea how to solve a problem. Now, once you have designed the algorithm, the next thing is you have to specify your algorithm. You have to specify your algorithm. You have to write your algorithm in some format. So you can specify your algorithm in actually uh, three formats. One is you can write your algorithm in a natural language like English like steps. Step number one is this, step number two you do this, step number three you do this and so on. That is a natural language, a way of expressing an algorithm. But that's not very suitable because natural languages are ambiguous. A different person may derive a different meaning from your statement. Therefore, we go for something called as uh, pseudocode. Pseudocode is a mixture of a natural language and uh, programming syntax. This is more precise and more clear. So using pseudocode format, you can specify the steps that is involved in your algorithm. Or sometimes you can also design a flowchart, a graphical representation for your algorithm. You can create a flowchart for specifying your algorithm. Now specifying your algorithm is very important because 
because there, are, there may be other developers who are, who are going to use your design uh, steps to implement it. So they should have an idea how to implement it. What is your design all about? Therefore, specifying a design, the best format, the best way to specify is a pseudocode format because there is less ambiguity in this. Now, once you have specified your algorithm, now you have created your algorithm, you have documented your algorithm. Now you need to check whether your algorithm is correct or not. Proving the correctness, does your algorithm give you the correct output for all legal inputs? You have to prove this using uh, mathematical induction, using taking help of mathematics, you can prove whether your algorithm is correct. If you are not satisfied, if you cannot prove that your algorithm is not correct, then you have to go back and then maybe you have to decide on, on this, these techniques or you have to redesign your algorithm. If your algorithm is not correct, you have to go back and redo your design task. But if you are, this is step number four, proving the correctness. If you know that your algorithm is correct now, it's giving the correct output for all legal inputs, then the next step is to analyze the algorithm. Now this is very important, right? In this, that is step number five. In this particular step, what you do is, you have to analyze the space and performance of your algorithm. Whenever I talk about performance, we mean space and time complexity. Now what is time complexity is, it's the amount of time that it takes to execute your program. And space complexity is the, the extra space that your, that your program takes for actually doing execution. You need to derive what is the time complexity of your algorithm and what is the space complexity of your algorithm. Now, if you're not satisfied with the time complexity, if it's taking a lot of time, then you're not satisfied, isn't it? In that case, you need to go back and redesign your algorithm. Maybe you have to choose a new data structures or maybe you have to uh, re take, uh, take help of new design technique and then you have to redesign your algorithm. If you're not satisfied with the time complexity or the space complexity, we'll have to redesign it and then come back here and then recalculate your time complexity. Once you're satisfied, then you go to the next step, that is step number six. In our next lecture, in our next video, I'm going to talk in details about how to, how to measure the time complexity and the space complexity of any given algorithm. The first module of this particular course is talking all about the analysis of algorithm. Now, once you're clear, once you're satisfied with the time complexity and the space complexity that you've derived, now you go to step number six wherein we actually code the algorithm. Now we implement it. If you just look at it, five steps, all these five steps are only applied for the design and analysis aspect. So far, you have not coded it. Now the last step number six is now you need to, once you are clear with the correctness, once you are satisfied with the time complexity, now, finally, you'll code your algorithm. Now, in coding, you have to take care of, in coding also, you can improve your algorithm's time complexity by doing a lot of small tunings, code tunings, optimizing your code. But coding is the last part that you do in, in any, if you're solving any new problem. The most important part is, coding is not that very important because coding will not take much time. Most of your time, you should invest on understanding the problem and then designing and then analysis. These are the very important uh, steps. Once you're clear on these things, coding is like anyone can do. You just need to translate the pseudocode that you have specified in a program. So these are the steps. Now, these are the general steps. Different problem may have a different way of approaching the solution for it. But this is the general approach for solving any problem. That is, this is the general process for designing analysis of algorithms. That's all for today's video. Thank you.